the Spanish-American War to the Persian Gulf, providing food, shelter, and supplies to disaster victims of the 1881 Thumb Fires through Hurricane Hugo and the Northern California earthquake, fulfilling the urgent needs of the medical community with the nation's premier blood supply. The American Red Cross is trained, dedicated people you can count on. We are neighbors like you, committed to help people prevent, prepare for, and cope with emergencies right now. From the Bay, Saginaw, and Genesee Lapeer chapters, here is the latest news and information from your American Red Cross. Good morning and welcome to Red Cross Currents. My name is Billy Ray Bates and I'm a volunteer with the Saginaw County chapter of the American Red Cross. And volunteers are everywhere. We do lots of different things around town. One important role that Red Cross volunteers have in Saginaw is to help out at the Alita E. Lutz Veterans Affairs Medical Center. This is a nursing home and a medical center located at 1500 Weiss in Saginaw. And on today's show, we're going to take you inside that facility. We're going to give you a little tour. We're going to meet some people who work there and volunteer there, as well as a resident. But first of all, allow me to introduce Kathy Tate. She is in charge of volunteer services at the Alita E. Lutz VA Center in Saginaw. Welcome, Kathy. Thank you. It's nice to be here. Yeah. Now, just to give an idea of how big the VA Center is, how many residents does the nursing home have and how many patients does the medical center house? The nursing home has capacity for 125 residents. We've been averaging about 100 patients uh, in there a day on a regular basis. And the hospital right now has about 60 patients in it. So it's, it's quite a busy place. Okay. And how old are the two facilities? The hospital was built in 1950. And we were fortunate we um, added on our nursing home about a year and a half ago. So it's, it's very new. Okay, we're going to see that later on in the show, yeah. just how new it is. Yeah. <laughs> Can you explain how this center is different from other nursing homes, other medical centers? Okay. The nursing home, which we're going to see, is primarily a rehabilitation nursing home. Hopefully the residents that are in there, they're going to uh, achieve a level of uh, care that they can go back home and live that they'll have their occupational therapy and physical therapy or speech therapy and they're going to be able to go back and live a normal life like you and me. They'll have recuperated and uh, go back and be part of the society. And, okay. and then the hospital, our hospital is pretty much like the community hospitals except for we service primarily veterans, and only veterans. Um, and they're both male and females, and we've had veterans from that are just out of the service now. We've had Desert Storm, we have Vietnam veterans, and uh, we've had uh, a lot of World War II veterans coming in. Okay. What is the organization called the VAVS? We, it's called the Veterans Affairs Voluntary Service, which is an organization of all the service organizations in our service area that make up, and it's basically the volunteers that come into our hospital. I understand that there's an event coming up called the National Salute to Hospitalized Veterans. Can you tell us when that is and what it is? The National Salute is centered around the February 14th, and it's always around Valentine's Day. It's approximately, I believe, about 22 <coughs> years um, in process, and it's where we invite people from the community to come into the hospital uh, to visit with the patients. We have a lot of the school kids that make valentines, uh, bake cookies for the patients, uh, do a little bit of everything. The volunteers will be holding a number of special events during that week. So it's, it's, it's a special time for our veterans and it's, it's their time. It's their time for those that are in the hospitals. Okay. We have a public service announcement that we're going to show you right now that it's going to tell you a little bit more about this event coming up, the National Salute to Hospitalized Veterans. Yes, shot, Wes. Hi, I'm Charles Durning. You know, we all cherish making new friends. We often give a fresh spin to our lives. But there's one group of friends we sometimes forget, our hospitalized veterans. I encourage you to volunteer your time at a VA medical center near you. You just might give a new friend a fresh angle on life. And who knows, you might even learn a new trick or two yourself. Right, Wes? Right, Charlie. Back them. Now, Kathy, is the Red Cross the only organization that sends volunteers to the VA Center? No, at our hospital, we have approximately 32 different service organizations. 
Uh, Red Cross is one of them. They have been at our hospital since it opened in 1950. Uh, but there's any of the local service organizations. We also have unions that are involved and special interest groups that participate at our hospital. And then we have a lot of what we call unaffiliated volunteers that come into the hospital that don't belong to the service organizations that uh, we appreciate their help. Okay. Now, one of the volunteers at the VA Center is Mike Burke. And we are going to meet him now as we take you inside the VA Center where Mike talks to John Jenkins of the Red Cross. Now, Mike, how long have you been with the VA? Uh, I've been with them going on four years now. And, and the affiliation that you have with the VA has been to, uh, uh, through uh, the Vietnam Veterans of America and the UAW, correct? Yes, that's correct. Okay. And now, what is it you do here at the nursing home? Uh, basically, I take patients to and from their therapy, physical therapy, occupational therapy, a speech therapy, uh, just various therapies that go from the nursing home back and forth they transport. Okay. And I also, uh, uh, one day a week, I drive the, for the Disabled American Veterans DAV, I drive the van, which transports patients to and from Ann Arbor, all oh, patients. And now, uh, what is the connection to, I noticed that you're a member of the UAW, are there a number of UAW members that are here volunteering? Yeah, they got, uh, each local's got a veterans council usually, and they come in periodically and do outings, they sponsor, uh, we're in, Together with uh, the Malibu and uh, 699, we do uh, the fairgrounds every year. We take the patients out to the fairgrounds. They come in and do cookouts. 668 uh, was originally involved, and they got the other ones to come in with us. So there's a lot of activities that involve interaction with the volunteers and the patients, right? Oh, yes. Uh, they, uh, every uh, outing, they get as many volunteers as they can to come to each patient can have one-on-one -on -one usually they try it that way and uh, yes that's right Kathy why in particular does the Red Cross send volunteers to the VA Center in Saginaw uh, part of it was when the Red Cross was started it was part of their charter and I think it's just a dedication that they have kept up from when they have worked with a lot of guys in the service and I think they've continued with that and we've been very fortunate to have them there. Can you tell us some of the different things that Red Cross volunteers do at the facility? Uh, one of their biggest projects is every Sunday afternoon they come in and uh, hold a coffee hour for the patients. And they bring in homemade cookies. And the volunteers are based out of our auditorium. And then they also take uh, coffee carts with the cookies up to the patient's ward and provide cookies and coffee to the patients that can have them and to any of their family members that are there visiting. Then we also have them come in and they help with some of our parties and some of our functions. They work in escort service transporting the patients. Uh, we have a couple of them that help pass out our admission kits, uh, one that works our information desk, uh, one that uh, works with a chaplain. They're in pretty much every area of the hospital. They really get around and they're more than willing to do uh, just about anything they can to help the patients. Okay, great. When we come back, we are going to talk to a resident of the nursing home. Here's at the Alita E. Lutz VA Medical Center in Saginaw. And with me is Kathy Tate, who is in charge of volunteer services at the center. And Kathy, we were just talking about different kinds of things that um, the volunteers do at the VA Center in Saginaw. What are some of the activities that residents of the nursing home get involved with, and how do volunteers help with that? The uh, volunteers come in, and, and they do a large pro portion of the activities. Could be our evening bingos that they sponsor uh, could be the outings and we try to take the guys out as much as possible right now we're a little limited because of the weather uh, I believe it was uh, this week they, they took a trip to the movies they went to uh, one of the local theaters and spent the day at the movies and of course the volunteers are the ones that provide assistance for them we always have a staff member go with them uh, but volunteers uh, help with pushing the wheelchairs and getting the guys there uh, they like to go to the mall and spend a little time. We always have volunteers that assist them for that. Uh, as Michael mentioned, his volunteer group take the guys to the Saginaw Fair. They really enjoy going to the fair and they go down and they spend the whole day. Hopefully the weather will be nice and they don't get rained on. And the volunteers uh, always provide them with a nice barbecue lunch. 
uh, and then take them around the fairgrounds so they enjoy that. Uh, they help with some uh, smaller activities. They provide uh, card games for the patients, uh, visitation. Uh, we have volunteers that come in and read occasionally to some of our patients, especially if they're uh, visually impaired. Uh, then uh, that could be that either a book or a magazine or even the newspaper. Uh, so the volunteers are, are there to really provide a large service for the patients. Okay. This VA facility proves very valuable for residents like Ambrose Laboda. And Ambrose had some pretty good things to say when we talked to him at the center. Which, which branch of the service were you in, Mr. Laboda? I was in the Air Force attached to the quartermaster corps. And when was that? From 1941 to 1944. Okay, so how long have you been, have you been in the nursing home here since it was built? No. When, when did you come in? I came in, in October. Okay. And I'm still here. All right. How do you like it here? <laughs> they treat me real good and Really, really, real good. I haven't got no, no complaints at all. Okay. What about some of the activities that you participate in uh, to fill your days? Well, they have bingos at night. That's where I go most of the time. And uh, you win any money? Yeah, I win money. Yeah, great, great. <laughs> and uh, then I go to uh, exercises. They got exercises here, and that takes up a hour or so. And then I go to, uh, I don't go too much to the other stuff, it's just that, but they got a, all kinds of stuff you want to do it. But I, I haven't got nothing to complain about the place. I, they treat me real nice. Okay. Now, I'm sure the question that's burning in everybody's mind, what's the food like? I haven't got no complaints about the food. Okay. It's just ordinary food, just like I always eat home. And some place, some of these guys want, you know, something like big steaks and stuff, and they can't give them that. They're all on a diet. Right. Okay. <laughs> that's, that's terrific. Yeah. yeah. What would you say, what kind of, uh, if someone was thinking about coming here as a patient, uh, is there anything you could tell them about uh, what to expect when they, when they come in here? Well, you get, it takes a little while to learn everything, where to go, and and it's a nice place. That's all I can tell you about the place. Okay. It's really nice for me. Yeah. I'm satisfied. You, you've got a lot of freedom uh, to kind of come and go as you please, right? Yeah, I got a lot of freedom out there. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's why they have a hang of a time finding me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Now, uh, in the in, in the, the course of a normal day, you have a lot of contact with your with your uh, uh, fellow veterans. I mean, is that one of the things that that has brought you here? Is it the, you know kind of like the camaraderie you enjoyed in the service? Is, is another way to enjoy that? Well, I came here because I got sick. Okay. <laughs> I thought I was going to lose my leg, but they brought the back where it's supposed to be so I can walk. All right, that's terrific. That's yeah. Terrific. Uh, Kathy, are there opportunities for volunteers to do secretarial work, such as answering phones and filing and typing and things like that? We have a number of areas. Uh, a lot of the services utilize the volunteers to help do their filing. I know in our office particularly we have a volunteer who comes in every Tuesday afternoon and we have a basket where we keep our filing and she does all the filing in our office. And it's, it's nice for us. She's learned the system. She has good skills. And uh, it's just really it, it beneficial to our office. And if we have to go out, she's there to answer the phone. So yeah, we have a lot of volunteers that work in different offices or help out. And, and sometimes even on a short-term basis, uh, maybe even just full days, uh, some of our regular volunteers will pitch in. But we do place them in regular assignments around the hospital in different areas. Okay. The VA Center also has a library, and how do volunteers help out with that? Uh, the library, the, the biggest thing that they have is they push the book cart. Uh, we have a patient library as uh, part of the facilities, 
and we have a volunteer that goes around and checks with the patients to see if they would like any reading material. And it could be magazines or it could be uh, paperback books or hardback books. And then she carries a lot of patient education material so that we can educate the patients as much as possible as to what's wrong with them and how they can help themselves better. Uh, and they also, we keep um, paperback books around the hospital and the volunteers stock that on a regular basis. Okay. What about more specialized work? Could a volunteer actually get experience in an area that would help him or her with a future career? We've had students, the VA has a large youth program and we're seeing a lot more high school kids and also college students that are looking for a little bit of expertise in their field. Uh, in the area of nursing, of course, they want some experience uh, before you complete your schooling. And they come down and they may work on the wards helping uh, the nursing assistants or uh, passing water or pushing patients to give them a little bit of expertise. So we really encouraged the youth. And we tried this summer, we had a special program for our youth. We had about 15 students that came into the hospital. And at the end of the summer, uh, as kind of a reward, we took them on a canoe trip down the Asabo. So we tried to do something special with them. Uh, the patients enjoy the students coming in because they're younger. They're tired of us old people in there. And, uh, the kids really add something to us. They're energetic, they're vivacious, um, they're a joy. So we encourage the youth. And I recommend any youth, if they have the time, to come in and volunteer. Uh, the VA is one of the fortunate ones. We even have a scholarship program for students. And it's based on their volunteer time at the hospital. Um, so if anybody wants to come in, especially the youth, come in and volunteer. Okay. A few years ago, I worked in a nursing home in the kitchen. And I know that each resident had his or her own special dietary requirements. How do you keep all of that straight? And do volunteers help with that? It's hard. Yeah. Every patient. Um, has some type of dietary requirements, whether it be low salt or low fat, or he has to be on a diabetics diet, or weight reduction, or a weight gain. We have those too. And we encourage the volunteers if they are putting on a function, uh, whether it be bingo or the ladies that come in for Red Cross or an activity, that they bring in something that the guys that are on special diets could have. Um, a lot of times they'll, they'll bring in uh, meats and cheeses for the guys to have. Uh, and then they'll bring in fruit. A lot of the diabetics, they can have the fruit where they can't have the other items. So they're real good at helping the patients uh, keep an eye on their diet, what they can have and what they can't have. Okay. One of the staff members at the Alita E. Lutz VA Medical Center in Saginaw took time out of a very busy morning to talk to us about his job. This is Kevin Brown. He's a licensed vocational nurse at the center. Now, Kevin, how long have you been with the VA and how long you're in Saginaw? I was with the VA briefly in 82 after I got out of the Navy, and I've been in Saginaw only since August uh, with the VA here. How would this facility compare to the other nursing home units that you've worked in? There is no comparison. This is more like a home atmosphere. It's very rehabilitative oriented. Uh, our main focus is to get the guys in and get them out, get them back to where they want to be. So it's not uh, like a warehousing type situation? or No, we don't keep people. The, the general rule is three months, and we've had people that stayed longer, but the the desire is to keep them here no longer than three months. Okay. Great. Uh, how about staff morale, camaraderie? I know there's a lot of joking. Uh, you get along very well with one another? Um, I think we've got a great crew. Uh, the people work together real well as a team, and I'm real pleased to be here. I, I can't think of any place I'd rather be uh, working in this type of a, an orientation. What about Michigan weather? Isn't that a little bit of a letdown? I grew up in Owasso. I was oh, born in Detroit. Great. I've been in California for 24 years and just come back this year in June. So um, it's been fairly mellow. It's been nice to come back to. And they're raining in California, so I'm glad I'm not there. Sure. Yeah. That's great. That's great. Um, if you had any advice to someone who was thinking of, of the VA nursing home as opposed to uh, another one, what what would you say to tip the scales in favor of the Saginaw nursing home? You're talking as far as patients or employees? Right, patients. patients? Um, again, I think the, the strong emphasis on rehabilitation, um, the fact that it is a real homey atmosphere, uh, there's no more than two people per room, uh, each person has their own telephone, their own TV, it's very comfortable here, but at the same time the encouragement is to re rehabilitate and get out on their own again. 
In just a little while, we're going to talk to one of the valuable Red Cross volunteers at the VA Center. But um, first of all, we're going to take a tour. Kathy, can you tell us what we're seeing as we see these um, visual shots of inside the VA Center? This is the new nursing home and we're at the nurses station, which is centered in between uh, three uh, corridors to the wards, which makes it nice because nurses can see down each corridor uh, as to what's happening and what's going on. As you can see, it's a busy area. There's a number of people there. The, this room is one of a patient's room. Uh, you can see the telephones in there. We were one of the first VAs in our region and in the state of Michigan to put phones in our patient's room. It's really nice because we do not charge our patients for their phones. Uh, this is one of the new TVs that were installed and the patients have their own individual TVs and uh, have cable access in there for them. So you can see it's a nice area, a nice bright cherry. Um, a lot different, different from a, a typical patient's room. And we encourage them to bring their own items. Uh, we have some that have their plants in there and if they have hobbies. Uh, this is in one of the day rooms that has the stereo in there. Guys can go in and listen to the radio, um, enjoy uh, the privacy or have their family over if there's a number of people. So it makes it nice. Nice bright couch in there for them. So it's a nice little area. It goes off into a patio where they can go outside and enjoy it. This is the entrance to the new nursing home. We're real pleased with this. It's a beautiful area, nice uh, level ground to get into. Nice looking facility. It is just beautiful. Okay, we'll when we out. come back, we are going to talk to a Red Cross volunteer at the VA Center. Welcome back to Currents. We are talking about the very important role that Red Cross volunteers play in the E. Lutz VA Medical Center in Vienna. And with me is Kathy Tate, who's in charge of volunteers at the VA Center. And also joining us is Dolores Archambault. She is a Red Cross volunteer at the center. Welcome, Dolores. Thank you. Now, what do you do at the VA Center? Uh, now, what I do is I work in the nursing home care unit. And uh, basically, what I do is uh, I do some of the guys wash for them that have their own clothes because a lot of the guys like to wear their own clothes rather than the gowns or the pajamas from the hospital and they don't have nobody, you know, come regularly to get it done. And I help uh, make beds for, for the nurses if, uh, like while they're taking the guys in to do their, sh uh, help them with their show or something. And I help pass water. And I uh, sometimes just talk to the guys because a lot of guys don't have uh, visitors. And uh, then I also help uh, going on outings and help when they have parties there. Okay. How many hours a week does that amount to usually for you? It's, well, I, my regular hours is about seven, eight hours every Wednesday. But then extra activities, it varies, you know, sometimes three to four hours at, at a time for special outings or uh, parties or something. Okay. In a minute, we're going to um, give you a phone number that you can call. You can contact Kathy at the VA Center if you're interested in volunteering. But first of all, Dolores, why did you first decide to volunteer for the VA Center? Well, I guess it was that I was, I don't want to say just a housewife because everybody yells at me, but I was never worked and when my three boys got so that they were in high school and that I didn't have that much to do and the empty nest syndrome and that so I seen it advertised in the paper that Red Cross and I went down and uh, took a class on volunteering and that and then they needed somebody at the VA hospital and they called me about 20 years ago and I've been there. Okay great and what benefits have you gotten in those years? Well, the benefits, I guess, is just knowing that you've helped someone, and the guys are so happy. Uh, some, if you just stop and talk to them or say hi, you know, it's a good morning, or, or you know, just walk by them and pat them on the hand or something, because they like that. Okay.
Okay. Kathy, there was talk recently of consolidating some of the services of the Saginaw VA Center with the VA Center that's closest to it, which is in Ann Arbor. Has any decision been made on that? Yes. In fact, we had a recent meeting with our medical center director who was in Washington, and Saginaw is no longer on the list for consolidation. Okay. Uh, there's still some hospitals that they're looking at that are closer together. And one of the primary reasons for Saginaw is the fact that we're 90 miles from Ann Arbor, and it's a long distance. And of course, we service from Flint all the way to the bridge. So we were afraid that uh, that would be a long distance for some of our patients. So yeah, there's not going to be a consolidation for Saginaw. Okay. Well, as we get ready to close here, I want to thank you both for joining me on today's show. And if you want more information about the Alita E. Lutz VA Medical Center in Saginaw, this is the number to call. It's 517-793-2340, extension 3260. And you can call Kathy up and ask her what areas they need volunteers in. And thank you for joining us this week. We'll see you next week.